CTA guided outflow targeted embolization for direct carotid cavernous fistula. This is a 26-year-old male with blurred vision and diplopia after head injury. Proptosis and conjunctival injection were also noticed. CTA images were used to evaluate the location and size of the fistula point, as well as its projection at ICA. By evaluating the compartment structure and outflow routes of the cavernous sinus, we know how to navigate our microcatheters to the targets. In these CTA images, the red dot represents the ICA course. The fistula point and three outflow channels were identified. Careful evaluation is the key to recognize the fistula point. There were two retrocortical flows. Three outflow channels were a vein from the cerebellum, sphenoparietal vein, and superior ophthalmic vein. The rationale of embolization is to preserve ICA. We save our transarterial route first, and the sequence of embolization is from the peripheral to the fistula point, outflow targeted. We navigated microcatheters into each outflow channel. During embolization, a coil dislodged from the isthmus of sphenoparietal vein to superficial sylvan vein due to size mismatch. Now we finished peripheral coiling. There was no reflux to intracranial veins. In final DSA, we preserved the ICA. There were no intracranial refluxes, no venous outflows visualized in the arterial phase. Contrast stagnation in the cavernous sinus was noticed. The patient was discharged without new neurologic deficits.
We embolize the peripheral outflows first to keep the ICA visualized. We obliterate intracranial reflux first to avoid intracranial hemorrhages. Outflow targeted embolization can increase successful rates for CCF obliteration and ICA preservation. In comparison with the standalone dense packing technique at the fistula point, the outflow targeted embolization with loose packing around the fistula point can avoid compression of embolic agents to the ICA, compressive cranial neuropathy, unwanted redistribution of intracranial outflows.